Welcome to another episode of the Jam Pack Report, today for May the 3rd of 2021, and we are getting into it, the height of the summer gaming news season. We are just about one month away from E3 2021, which is going to be a digital event, and on top of that, Summer Game Fest is bringing plenty of industry events and announcements in the weeks and months ahead. But before those announcements are officially made, as is tradition, some leaks do tend to come out. And today we have plenty of news to dive into surrounding some leaks that have come from the Epic vs. Apple court case documents that were revealed a couple of days ago. On top of that, Battlefield 6 screenshots have reportedly made their way online. And on top of that, we also have Nintendo upping their Switch production ahead of what could be the announcement of the Nintendo Switch Pro. Lots to dive into for your Monday morning, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. Microsoft explored reducing its Xbox Store cut to shake up console gaming. This report comes from Tom Warren over at The Verge, but this news follows last week's announcement that Microsoft would cut its cut of shares on the PC gaming front, where instead of taking a larger portion of the entire deal, they would instead reduce their cut to 12%, leaving 88% to go to developers when a dev releases a game on their store front, which is exactly where Epic has, and they have been pushing the industry forward in that way. But it seems they did not initially want to stop with PC gaming. It seems they wanted that 12% cut to increase and spread to the Xbox hardware side of things. And so in short, if a developer were to release a game on an Xbox piece of hardware on the Xbox store front, that cut would be reduced from 30% down to 12%, which would be shaking the industry up in a very, very big way because currently Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft all take 30% of the revenue from their store fronts. But on top of that, things get even more interesting towards the middle of this report. Quote, the documents also revealed that Microsoft had been planning to adopt this lower store rate on the PC side with an important caveat. Quote, there is a proposal currently under gaming leadership team consideration to adopt 8812 as a public PC games revenue share for all games in exchange for the grant of streaming rights to Microsoft reveals the document. We asked Microsoft whether this proposal went ahead, but the company refused to comment in time for publication. Microsoft is planning to cut its share of revenue for PC games to 12% in August, but it's not clear if the streaming rights clause is still included, end quote. That makes this story even more complicated and even more convoluted, because instead of this new uh, setup just being purely good for developers. On top of that, it also brings a lot of streaming benefits to Microsoft, which of course is trying to compete heavily in the streaming space with Project X Cloud, aka Xbox Cloud Streaming. So, if this clause is still included in this summer's changes, in short, you could see a lot of games shifting cloud exclusivity to Microsoft's side rather than being available on Nvidia's GeForce Now or on any other competitive streaming service, you could see this exclusively over on the Xbox side of things, which would bring a pretty big benefit as the future does continue to unfold. We've been talking a lot about potential streaming sticks that could bring Xbox to any kind of television just through something as simple as an Amazon Fire TV. Or on top of that, you see them adding compatibility to web browsers around the world like Google Chrome and Edge. That is going to be a big benefit if cloud gaming continues to grow and evolve in the trajectory it is today. And so I love this idea of giving developers more of the revenue, but on the Xbox side of things, we still have to remember that Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo, these are businesses. These aren't people that are just trying to put good out into the world. These are companies trying to generate revenue. And they're bringing games to Xbox either way, especially this generation. With the Xbox One, it was a much weaker piece of hardware in terms of both power and in terms of popularity. But now with the Xbox Series X and S and on top of that increased PC uh, experiences, increased PC presence, Xbox is a powerhouse of a brand that people want their games to be present on. And so for Microsoft to reduce its cut is essentially just leaving money on the table. 
again, I want developers to get as much money as they can for the experiences they are creating, but it doesn't really make sense for Microsoft to reduce that cut other than to just increase their positivity in the public eye. That's really the only reason that I could imagine Microsoft make this move. Uh, but it was in the plans at one point or another. And of course, as we have seen in the past couple of days, Microsoft has decreased their cut on the PC side of things in an effort to increase that popularity for developers to come and put stuff on the Microsoft storefront on PC. I will also say one other thing that popped into my mind over the weekend and I tweeted about it. Whenever we see the cut being reduced, you initially think that Microsoft wants to increase their popularity on PC and compete directly with Steam, but I don't think that's actually the case. No one can truly compete with Steam because Valve has made that platform such a monumental presence in the PC gaming space. Instead, Microsoft is focusing on competing for second place. They are focusing on competing with the Epic Games storefront because Epic Games still has not made revenue from that storefront. Even with all of the free games they have given away, even with all of the stops they're pulling out to try and compete directly with Steam, Epic is still trailing behind. They are making up ground, but they are still trailing behind. Microsoft, with Game Pass Ultimate, could potentially be a direct competitor with Epic Games, and if it is implemented properly, be a major goliath in the PC gaming space that could, in the years ahead, compete with Steam. But right out of the gate, it seems like Microsoft reducing its cut to 12% is certainly going to be competing more with Epic than they are with Valve. But all that being said, it seems considerations were in place for the Xbox side of things to get that same treatment, but that does not appear to be happening because Microsoft has officially responded and said, quote, we have no plans to change the revenue share for console games at this time. And they continued, we will not be updating the revenue split for console publishers. Microsoft still refuses to answer whether the document is inaccurate or simply that plans have changed. So there you have it. But in the meantime, you could be looking forward to buying and playing Battlefield 6 on Xbox and PlayStation and PC, and some images have reportedly leaked ahead of Electronic Arts' big reveal this summer. A pair of images have shown up, and they were shared by influencer Tom Henderson here, who you might know as Long Sensation YouTube on Twitter, but that account was suspended. Uh, however, now we have these images to go off of. These look a little bit soft because these were originally very, very small, and they were upscaled through AI. So what you have here is something that looks very, very similar to a Battlefield 3 or a Battlefield 4. You see a rocket silo preparing for launch. You see this jet. You see on top of that, down below Osprey Gunners, which is very exciting for someone like me who is wanting to get into that modern setting, and it looks like that's exactly what we have in store. Again, a lot of analysis to do on these images, but this could be your very first look at Battlefield 6, and a new announcement is on the way. Last week, the official Battlefield Twitter account changed their profile pictures, changed their headers, and everything is very, very simplified. Just a black background with Battlefield all over it. So it looks like we are going to be seeing some news in the weeks ahead. I've seen some people talking about something in very, very early May, but that seems a bit soon for me. Of course, potentially we could see a teaser that teases something for E3 or potentially teases something for the Electronic Arts event, which is traditionally pretty standalone. Uh, but it looks like things are ramping up, and this could be your very first look at Battlefield 6, which is one of the year's biggest first-person shooters. Very excited about this one because of the way that Battlefield has been in the years past. When you look back to Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, which, believe it or not, were actually back-to-back. -back. Yes, that's how that franchise works. Uh, you see these games continuing to have a presence for years after their release, and that's very significant. Because Battlefield 6, when it releases this year, effectively sets up the next three to four years of Battlefield. This is going to be one of the biggest FPSs of this generation because of its modern setting. And if it's implemented properly, the gunplay in Battlefield can be a fantastic and very, very engaging experience. I loved Battlefield 3, loved Battlefield 4. They began to fell off a little bit after that uh, for me personally, but I still love those modern experiences, and that's what I'm hoping to get from Battlefield 6. 
But we'll stay tuned. I'm sure more news is coming in the weeks ahead, and you can keep it tuned in right here to the Jam Pack Report. I'll always relay all of the hottest news to you. Finally, to round out today's show, Nintendo has declined to comment on the latest Switch Pro report. It seems that the company is increasing Switch production to 30 million units for this fiscal year, ending on March 31st of 2022. That's a significant push, and this is something that is unprecedented because of the stage of this console's life. You're five years into the Nintendo Switch, and you're increasing the production by 30 million units. That seems like you want to have a stockpile of hardware to potentially shift your focus elsewhere, potentially shift your focus to a Nintendo Switch Pro, perhaps. That's what a lot of people are predicting here. And that's what I would predict as well. On top of that, Nintendo responding to say there is nothing we can tell you about production numbers and higher end models. That is a direct quote. That seems to be something that is not a direct denial, in my opinion. And Nintendo is pretty popularized for uh, having direct denials. So I would say you can probably look forward to seeing some kind of news around a Nintendo Switch Pro at E3. Again, they have said that there is nothing to share in the immediate future. They are not focusing on higher end hardware, but it would make sense for them to release some kind of mid-generation upgrade to keep the momentum of the Nintendo Switch going because it's still selling very, very well. It's one of the top pieces of best-selling hardware in the past year, and it has been for months and months and months. Uh, And so, when you look forward to the future, there is no reason to stop selling the Nintendo Switch Lite or the original Nintendo Switch, but for those that are looking for that 4K experience, for those that are looking to upscale their images with that DLSS technology and to improve performance on the go and on televisions, but Nintendo Switch Pro is something that a lot of people might go out and get, even if it is $300, $400, maybe even $500. Uh, personally, I think that $399 is a pretty sweet spot right there because then you have the entry-level Switch Lite, you have the intermediary uh, $299 Switch, and then you have the uh, $399 Switch Pro. That seems to be a pretty good setup for me. But if you're looking forward to a Nintendo Switch Pro, it seems them, uh, or I should say Nintendo, increasing their supply by 30 million units is a pretty good signal that you could be seeing some new hardware into the market in the months ahead. But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about everything we talked about here today. But how do you feel about Microsoft potentially reducing its cut on the Xbox storefront? Of course, that is not happening, but would you have liked to see that? And how do you think it would impact the overall space in the gaming industry? Would love to hear what you have to say. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your night. I'll talk to you soon and peace.